Redundant arrays of independent disks are disk arrays that implement combination of data stripping and redundancy. They are implemented in different settings. These settings are called RAID levels. RAID levels are used in order to achieve desired trade-offs between reliability and performance. In RAID, the disk storage is partitioned into reliability groups, which is a set of data disks and a set of check disks. A common redundancy scheme such as Hamming codes, parity, or Reed Solomon codes is applied to a reliability group. For the purpose of our discussions, following the textbook, we assume only one reliability group, which is not necessarily always the case in RAID implementations. We will also assume in our example for discussion, sample data that would fit into four disks. And we will assume that our story system without RAID consists exactly of four disks. In RAID level zero, data stripping is used, but no redundant information is maintained. Because we do not store redundant information, the solution is low cost and provides low reliability. Data stripping is used to increase bandwidth. Write performance is high. This is because there is no need for writing redundant information in a data write. But read is not that efficient. This is because there is only one copy of data available, and there is no option of an alternate read scheduling for enhancing performance. In our example, having four disks and data that would fit in four disks, RAID level zero solution will have four data disks. Regardless of number of data disks, effective space utilization in RAID level zero is always 100%. That is because of lack of redundancy. In RAID level one, two identical copies of data are kept. That makes RAID level one the solution which is the most expensive and has the lowest utilization which is at 50%. No stripping is used in RAID level one. Writes are scheduled to happen on one disk first and then follow on the mirror disk. This is to ensure to protect against incidents of global system failure during an event of write causing an inconsistency. Reads could be scheduled to optimize performance, choosing to happen from either copy. In our example, having four disks and data that would fit in four disks, rate level one implementation will have four check disks with mirrored data, shown with C for check in the figure. Regardless of number of data disks, effective space utilization in rate level one is always 50%. That is because of mirroring. Rate level one had no stripping. But RAID level 0 plus 1, which is also sometimes referred to as RAID level 10, combines stripping and mirroring. As in RAID level 1, the read of the block could be performed on either of the disks. Read for contiguous blocks of data could benefit aggregated bandwidth of all disks. Write performance is similar to RAID level 1, as it also needs double the writes that do not happen at the same time. In our example, having four disks and data that would fit in four disks, RAID level 10 implementation will also have four check disks with mirrored data. This is similar to RAID level one. Regardless of number of data disks, effective space utilization in RAID level 10 is also always 50%. That is also because of mirroring. RAID level two uses error correcting codes and single bit stripping. Remember that single bit stripping distributes data at bit level over disks. This means that the unit of transfer from D disks is a set of D blocks. Therefore, RAID level two is good for workloads with large requests 
and bad for workloads with small requests. In our example, having four disks and data that would fit in four disks, RAID level two implementation will have three check disks. This will bring the utilization to 57%. Number of check disks grow logarithmically with the number of data disks. Therefore, effective utilization increases with grow in the number of disks.